My name is Jason. My name is Julian. And tonight, we doing, doing filmographies. On the 26th day of Pittsmiss, my true love gave me the boot. She said, leave. It's the 27th day of Pittsmiss. Oh, it was pretty close, though. Christmas Day was the devil's own. Mm-hmm. 26 was seven years in Tibet. I was reading today that he claims he has that disorder where you can't remember faces. That's interesting. I wonder how that works. Who are you? How'd you get in here? I don't recognize you. What do you, you see then if you don't see a face? I think you just, I think it just doesn't read as being connected to a memory. I, I think you still see the face. You mm-hmm. don't just see like a square. Mm. What if you did though? We would never know. Yeah, because all you see is squares. You mm. don't see a square either? It's just a gray square? <laughs> no, I know I'm, I'm not that cool, Mr. Pitt, but you're not going to call me a square. Then what is Minecraft? I don't understand. I thought that was a perfect representation of what we all see. Mm hmm. Meet Joe Black, the twenty yeah. seventh day of Pittsmas, right here in my basement in St. Paul, Minnesota. Yeah, meet Joe Black. What a humdinger of a movie, if I do say so myself. What what do you what kind of fancy thing do when do you want to do the shot? I'm really full. Maybe oh. a shot would get right me now? into drinking mode. Yeah, we need to do it right now. Blue raspberry or kinky red? Uh, all right 99 blue raspberry 99 proof liqueur available at your local liquor store go in there and say oh god give me 99 kinky red a tantalizing fusion of fresh watermelon and strawberry fresh watermelon thankfully not stale or rancid watermelon i don't know if that had fresh watermelon or strawberry in it wow Fuck. They are just inventing flavors. Man, that blue raspberry flavor is like really pronounced, but it's just that bad alcohol that's paired with it every single time. You're just like, holy shit. Yeah. Meet Joe Black, 1998, rated PG-13. What? It's not R? Mm-mm. Apparently, according to IMDb, which I have to assume is gospel. I It's probably right. I just assumed it was R. This fucker is two hours and 58 minutes long. My copy said three, but maybe it had credits. Well, interestingly enough, there is a two-hour edit of oh, this film. I wonder about that. That they made for television and airlines. Basically, what they did was they chopped out all of the business stuff. I would think that would be the only thing you, you could get rid of, and I don't know that that's a good idea. It makes for a tighter film, but yeah, it, it oddly is kind of necessary. Yeah, it's like, how, what, what, how, what, how is the ending going to really feel like much of anything without that? Because, well, but so needless to say... um producer and director martin breast disavowed that edit and when you watch it uh the director's credit is for alan smithy directed by alan smithy yeah going in i i was expecting this to be entirely some sort of a dark romantic comedy oh you thought this is a funny movie not funny but like black comedy black humor we saw the movie multiplicity we know what the fuck clone mean motherfucker it mean you gonna feed us the ass clone cow meat now oh i see okay i was approaching it being this is going to be the most boring romance in the world i expected okay i guess at the end of the day i expected it to be specifically a romance movie i did not know it was three hours specifically until taylor mentioned it at the liquor store i didn't either till you told me and i had it on pause and i go oh i guess that's about right oh no two feature length films i did not expect all of the anthony hopkins stuff at all oh really okay. so i'm like damn we're spending an awful lot of time with how is this circle back <laughs> what I mean, 45 minutes later oh yeah that's right they're meant for each other the tagline for this film is he's expecting you got a little bit of field of dreams vibes from the whispers hey <laughs> you're gonna die i'm gonna come the answer is yes <laughs> yeah Who, who's expecting you anthony hopkins is expecting death or death, death is, is expecting, expecting you, you. But he's not, you don't come to him. He come to you. I guess, well, I guess I in guess a way when you're. specifically in this movie. It, yeah, but that, that's, that's an interesting point because it, it he seems to suggest that he's actively ending lives at all times in this movie. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I could see if it was like, if they hadn't established that aspect of it, then you could think, well, I guess when you're dying, you're knocking on death's door, summoning him. Mm-hmm. So he's expecting you. But oh, in here, hey. we, we see that he actively seeks you out. Maybe it'll be Brad Pitt for us when we die. Everything's going to be iry. That'd be cool Together. 
<laughs> I think the movie's also a little underserved by the fact that they've established basically there's like a heaven, and that seems to be where specifically um, Anthony Hopkins is expected to go. I mean, do they really say there's a heaven or that it's just the next place? Well, the, the next place, I mean, whatever it is, it's pleasant. Is it, it though? It seems to be when he shows that Jamaican lady, she goes, oh, snap. We're going to talk about that Jamaican scene, though. Yeah. Jamaican me <laughs> uncomfortable. <laughs> Didn't need that shit in there. I was so excited when they said Irie. <laughs> I was like, oh man, Jill's going to love this. <laughs> well, speaking of which, uh, the elderly Jamaican lady uh, is played by Lois Kelly Miller. Not Jamaican? No, she is. She's actually considered a uh, national treasure in Jamaica. Because of Micho Black? No, um, because she had become a household name for her decades-long professional career in both theater and pantomime. She was originally known as Lois Kelly Barrow. She died in 2020 at 19, the age of 102. 1992. Yeah. Wh- when did you say? 2020. Mm. She was 102. That's pretty good. Jason. She was 112, you said? Yeah, 135. That's a really good run. This movie was loosely based on Death Takes a Holiday from 1934. Yes. Black and white film. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything else about it, I suppose. It what, was like, a silent movie. Yeah, what is it, like Probably Gary not- Cooper or... Kelly Grant. Right, isn't it like a French movie? Oh, I don't know. I don't think it's American. It might be Italian. Maybe they hired Americans in French movies back then, like everybody in this movie's English. No, I think it might be a good movie. Except Brad Pitt. I think people like that movie. They do. This movie costs roughly 90, estimated $90 million. Well, 70 went to Brad, 20 to Anthony, and then they called in favors for the rest. Well, it, it, it was said that they went extremely over budget. Because it's three hours long. Which greatly inflated. I wonder if there was just like, like at the wedding scene, uh, when Anthony Hopkins is talking to the daughter, uh, the young, what is her name? Uh, Claire Forlani? Claire Forlani. There's no shot of them facing each other. It's all over his shoulder looking at her face, over her shoulder looking at his face. I was under the impression that, much like with Everybody Loves Trouble. They had sex and now they hate each other and can't be together for their shots. For whatever reason, they couldn't get together. Maybe it was scheduling, but they did it to, I'm sure those were stand-ins. Do you want to pretend, though, that (laughs) they had a really hot, fast fling and then they just can't stand each other after that? And he ended it. She goes, what? (laughs) Can I I tell you that in my head, Claire Forlani is a much bigger star and it's only because of mall rats? Second suitor, if we were making whoopee... What's whoopee? Um, oh, uh, well, if we were, uh, if we were being intimate... What, like f- <laughs> Because I've known her name and her face for so long, and I don't think she was in much. It's like, I mean, I think she's in stuff, but I don't think she's in much big. No, I think she came over from the pond and uh, hit a couple of biggies and then they were like all right yeah, shove ma- off mall rats and meet joe black they got mini driver they now. didn't do so good so hit the road jack mm-hmm. it did however make 142.9 million which uh is not great no for that high of a budget apparently it was the uh one of the first few movies showing the first trailer for star wars episode one the phantom menace oh really it was reported that droves of Star Wars fans bought tickets for this movie only to leave after the trailer. I believe it. When did episode one come out? This is 98? Episode one came out in 99. Really? That was a 99 movie too? Mm-hmm. Wow, that doesn't even register in my brain when I think of 99 movies. Yeah. Never, ever, ever. Eli Roth uh, had an early job working as a stand-in during the production of this movie, but was fired by Martin Brest due to a uh, sort of a mix-up or misunderstanding. I mean, do you have details? Otherwise, <laughs> reportedly, uh, the person that Roth was filling in for is taller than Eli Roth. So somebody had asked him to sort of walk in a way that he hitched up to meet that height level, so they can get the lighting or whatever. And Martin Brest just happened to be walking by and saw that and was like, "Get him out of here! That guy, what is he doing? He can't walk, or he's walking like an idiot or something." So they had to fire him. But then they later brought him back on um, as a production assistant but they made sure to keep him out of Martin Breast's sight. Huh. Isn't that odd? Yeah, it's not very long to cabin fever from this. That's cool, that's cool. Um, I guess I go smoke all this weed by myself then. I don't know, that's cool. Well, and it just sort of feels like, so you see a guy walking weird, just shit can him. Uh, that's all I have. So I think the only appropriate thing to do now would be to give me that synopsis. I can do that. If you built it, he will synopsis it. 
Meet Joe Black. On the eve of his 65th birthday, media mogul William Parrish, Anthony Hopkins, is experiencing existential crises while also on the cusp of a mega heart attack. Pending the sale of his news company to a large conglomerate, and also receiving messages from an ethereal voice in his head. Ethereal? Ethereal. Ethereal voice in his head. Susan Parrish, Claire Forlani, William's youngest daughter, meet cutes a nameless fella at a coffee shop, Brad Pitt, who, after rousing Susan's interest, gets hit by two cars. Eventually, it unfolds that death, curious about human life, takes over the body of Brad Pitt, now awkwardly named Joe Black, and forces William to be his human tour guide, while extending William's otherwise immediate demise in order to get William to say five simple words. I want to be born. (laughs) Only now that I remember what that was from. I've been wondering (laughs) about it today. Of course, things get a bit precarious in William's life with Joe taking along and it disturbing love blossoms for Susan Parrish when she meet Joe Black. (laughs) That was pretty good. Yeah. That's weird that Brad Pitt doesn't have a name. How did she not get his name at the coffee shop? They're just too into talking, maybe? Yeah, it's so bizarre. (sighs) So the movie starts, right? And I think we see uh, Marsha Gay Harden's character, Allison. Mm -hmm. She's trying to party the place up, you know, because it's Anthony Hopkins, her father's 65th birthday. Now, coming out of Legends of the Fall. Yeah. I was really looking forward to getting some more anthony hopkins sooner rather than later man i'm 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 really feeling like we might have had two extremely different uh, experiences watching this movie <laughs> i didn't yeah i didn't go for him in here i thought he was great i felt like maybe maybe it was just because that other role was so dynamic and this didn't really call for much except <laughs> restraint man i really felt him being 65 and experiencing arm pain and being like is this it i felt that i had a little bit of a heart attack myself during those scenes so she's getting the party ready and then we so yeah anthony hopkins he's having like severe arm and chest pains as he wakes up in his silk uh, sheeted bed don't we all have that though yeah Mm-hmm. Every single morning? Every morning. Yeah, really fight to, to make it awake and live. And he keeps hearing a whisper. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Green tea, not coffee. Yes, what? Huh? Who's there? Why do you want? Who let you in here? And he goes to the toilet. Peace blood. <laughs> he, he does. And, and then goes back to bed. And then he gets up and he goes outside and he runs into, uh, what's her name? Allison, Marsha Gay Harden's character, I think. Mm-hmm. Yep. But then he also sees um, his yeah. daughter. The one he doesn't love as much? The one he loves more. No, no yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah. Marsha Gay Harden's the one he doesn't really seem to love at all. But That's sad. Yeah. It makes me sad. It, me too, but only because it's even more soul crushing when they actually address it. And she's like, it's fine. I know. They just pretend that you. <laughs> you're, it's okay to have favorites. No, mm-hmm. not, not really. But th- but she goes, oh, yeah, I'm also, you know, I'm dating uh, that one guy that you work with. Uh, not Tom Cavanaugh from Ed. How do we turn a bad bowling alley into a good bowling alley? Fill the place with whores. Not Lee Pace from The Fall. The most I'm known as the masked bandit. No. Nah, it's that other guy yeah. that was around for five minutes in the 90s. Jake Weber or Weber? He plays Drew. Was he in a hint? Was he in like American Gothic? Someone's at the door. Someone's at the door. I don't know. I all I know is he was in twenty maybe twenty eight weeks later or twenty eight days later. One of those twenty eight movies. Really? Pretty I don't, sure. I don't think he was in the good one. Which is weeks? Days. Oh. Interesting. You like the one with Jeremy Renner? Uh huh. Oh man. That's... Much better. <laughs> really? Mm-hmm. That's not true. Yeah, and that guy's on fire. Love it. Jeremy Renner. Yeah. I mean, it, it probably has a couple of good scenes, but are you crazy? Because mm-hmm. 20 Days Later is amazing, especially like the last 20 minutes of that thing is worth sitting through that whole movie. I've I've just watched the last like 20 minutes. Apart of you. Oh, my God. At that point. Wow. Mm-hmm. Wow. I, well, I don't want to talk to you anymore. I hey, want man. you to leave. I prefer my zombie movies like Planet Terror. Stupid? Yeah. It's so cliche when they're like, the humans are the real monsters. American Gothic. He was in American Gothic. He was okay. like the, the main guy. Yeah, real shit kicker. That's the only reason I know this guy. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's all right. I, I did want to say Martin Brest. He direct- Geely. Yeah. Uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Midnight Run. Scent of a Woman. hoo woo So she goes, oh, yeah, I'm dating Drew. He's your American business partner, just like I'm your American daughter and your... American too. Uh, Anthony Hopkins is supposed to be American, huh? He doesn't I think. 
like it's like I'm used to that that Anthony Hopkins voice. So I'm like, you there might not be an accent. Yeah, maybe he's first generation, fresh off. The, I don't know, but he doesn't seem to be doing like his normal thing. Uh, so she goes, oh, speak of the devil, a helicopter lands, and it's Jake Weber. He comes out like, hey. Look at how handsome I am. Mm-hmm. I'm shaking my head no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they go, we got to go to this business meeting. You know who's better looking than Jake Weber? Charlie Sheen. Uh, Tom Cavanaugh from Ed. Yeah, he's dope. And Lee Pace. They're both, uh, this guy is like uh, Mr. A regular dorky looking I don't want to say it, but he's kind of like a, uh, I'm going to say it. I don't want to, but uh, I'm going to. He's kind of like bradley whitford extremely good and likable yeah and not like you know bad looking but it's also just like hmm. interesting i think jake weber has a real weak look to him and i don't feel that way about bradley whitford he's weak portrays strength oh interesting yeah how are you getting into it that's interesting so they get into the helicopter and they're flying to this business meeting still in the first 30 seconds of the movie (laughs) yeah the credits are still rolling and uh he goes to uh claire forlani he goes uh do you love this guy drew oh we met quince too uh jeffrey tamber yeah he's a, he ends up being apparently married to marcia gay Harden. i didn't link that at first until they kiss like an hour into the movie uh and they're talking business and they're, it's like a real frat guy kind of a environment i go back and forth on tambor until like the last half hour i loved him throughout the movie actually there's like a couple of moments in the movie where i'm like oh they, they just did they ask tambor to be funny in the scene so it's like doesn't really fit mm-hmm. yeah you well yeah yeah he's a weird guy what does he say i like little girls remember that yeah and then marcia gay harden just looks at him with sheer disgust oh. and confusion uh-huh. so he goes to claire he goes you know he, he, true's like an all right guy you know and but it's not what you say about Drew. it's what you don't say there's not an ounce of excitement not a whisper of a thrill this relationship is all the passion of a pair of tit mice i want you to dance the merengue at an fbi party i want you to really live it up and uh i want you to drown a bag of kittens in a in a bucket mm-hmm. i want you to find the fellow who just wants to talk about smashing your face with a, a hammer and it's romantic i just want to fucking smash it with a sledgehammer and squeeze it you're so pretty drew ain't that drew's but a fucking thumb let lightning strike he makes a weird face and she goes okay dad you know whatever so they land and he keeps hearing voices now it's him it sounds like him was it not always his voice the first yes yes i think was brad pitt or just a voice and then it becomes him specifically and people are like oh this is weird what's going on here but they're not alarmed by it enough so then claire she's a doctor she goes to have uh, coffee at a coffee shop restaurant oh, oh. diner mm-hmm. and victor argo comes by hey, fell away, you're gone. and brad pitt is being obfuscated by a partition partition that's frosted and he's just yelling hey honey you have to go on okay there's a time to sow and a time to reap go to college and you know make something of yourself and he reveals himself he goes oh sorry if i was talking loud she goes no that's fine you married no it's my sister oh sure no for real though fucking stupid ass boyfriend just left her Mm -hmm. and he's got like um what was it like corned beef he's just poking at it and he's kind of talking her up quite a bit yeah he's he's charming he's really he's new in town man i'm really i'm really at this point i'm really into pit julian Mm -hmm. at this point in the run i hate his hair in here his hair is a little stupid i'm cool with it i mean i let it pass i'm i'm able to teleport myself back to 1998 and it's fine okay okay it's frosted. It's yeah. actually the exact, almost the exact hair he has in being John Malkovich, too. So, he, you know, he's like, yeah, you never know. Lightning can strike. And she goes, what? And he buys her a cup of coffee, and they continue to talk and flirt. And uh, he's a, a lawyer that does a lot of pro bono. Meaning doing good. That's me. Uh, he's looking to pro bono her. And uh, she's, wow, that's very impressive. Um, and then she goes, well, I got to go. And he goes, yeah, okay, I got to leave, too. And they're outside. And he's, you know. She's feeling it. He's feeling it. She's like, I really like you. And he goes, I like you. It's like, I, I don't, I know I said you, I want you to be my doctor, but I don't want you to be my doctor. Why? Because I like you so much. She's like, I don't want you to be my patient. You don't. Why not? Because I like you so much. And then they walk away. And they don't know each other's names? And like six, no, they never introduce each other. <sighs> and they each, they both turn around independently while the other one's not looking like six or seven times. It's not quite that many, but boy, is it a lot. And oh, I'm going to do it. No, I can't do it. 
Oh, I'm gonna do. It. I can't. It's like it's the problem. And then I just kept waiting for the thing to happen, and then she makes it around the corner. Mm-hmm. He turns back and looks. You She's know, gone. He's like, oh fuck. He, he, I think he was gonna go after her, right? Like that's what that you see the, in his face. Yeah, he decides to do it in the middle of the street, but yeah, that that was his face. Well, I don't think he. Because he turns around and she's gone and he's just standing there. Yeah. And honk, honk. Smack. He almost gets hit, jumps backwards, gets hit, flies in the air and, and gets hit by the uh, car going the other way. Now, Julian. It, it's terrible CG. Did you? And green screen. Yep. Did you ever used to watch the scene and just laugh and laugh? Honestly, I had never. I don't know if I'd actually ever really seen this movie. So when I was looking for a scene, I think, from it, for a different podcast clip I was looking for, and I just when on Facebook or YouTube, meet Joe Black, this pops up. So I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, okay. And then he gets hit by a car and I'm like, this can't be real. <laughs> <laughs> this looks, this is, this is, somebody altered this to yeah. make the, this is funny. What is happening here? It's unbelievably silly. I used to laugh really hard watching this. I did not laugh. As, like, I made Jenny watch this part because she was down here doing her own thing. And I was like, hey, in about 30 seconds, he's going to get hit by two cars. Watch it. Mm-hmm. And she didn't laugh. And I was like, yeah, it's not as funny as I remember. I am pretty, I don't, I was excited about this movie when it first came out. I believe I rented it on the two VHSs because it's about, you know, death coming back and like having a holiday. Mm-hmm. You know, I was excited about that concept. I don't think I sat through all three hours of this thing. No. But I'm pretty sure I saw him get hit by those cars. Oh, well, I mean, yeah, it's like the first 15 minutes. Uh huh. Yeah. And, now I would assume he's dead. Well, I actually I was gonna say, why how could they possibly have hit him? It's a city street. Like what are they doing? That first guy honks and he almost gets hit by that guy. Yeah. You don't just get to run over pedestrians in the road. Nobody is just going fifty miles per hour and zoning out. It seemed like they were both going at least forty five fifty, yeah. It's kinda crazy that he was able to be killed on the street. He didn't just like run out into the road and surprise them. He was stationary. Mm-hmm. And he he would have been really really badly killed. <laughs> yeah. He'd be dead. Well, he's definitely dead. He well, died. then he, he comes back, right? Because death took his body. He he got a fresh vessel because he was dead. Well, but you would assume. So I I guess uh, they don't explain it, and you're not supposed to wonder. But he gets hit severely by those cars, yeah. and is probably just all sorts of damage. Yeah. Death assumes his body and crows himself back to peak. I know. The question is, like, uh, at what point did he reclaim the body? Was it in the morgue and he crawled out of there? Is there already a death certificate attached to this guy? Did he just grab him right then and there when the lights went out in his eyes and then skedaddled off? I mean, assuming what he tells us is accurate, he orchestrated that death. He killed him. Now, is he wearing the same outfit when he first shows up with anthony hopkins no is yes he, still, he is yeah so somehow he sucked all the blood stains and rips out of that's that that's what too? i mean i wonder <laughs> if he jumped into him like like god what's the name of that show on netflix quantum travelers oh. i wonder if it was like three two one and then he jumps into him before the car hits him and he just absorbs it because now he's death no, in this body i do not think so it's got like a force field around it i don't know when he did it but yeah he was he was dead and fucked up he should not look good but he does i mean he's a supernatural being he can do what he wants yeah but i mean the woman said he tells the jamaican lady that he can't take her pain away i don't have that ability or whatever he says so how can he then he completely heal a human body i don't know Jules. i mean it sort of seems a little odd but whatever so we get past that right so now anthony hopkins is uh at home and he's still really just daydreaming you know he's just walking through life with the head in the cloud. His business is going to be sold to a guy. Just one cloud? He's got a cloud that a cloud. keeps his head in? Mm-hmm. Okay. And I, unfortunately, it's cloud five, too. It's not even a, nine or, not a niner. But this Betancorp or some guy wants to buy his company. And uh, Drew's facilitating the deal. And Anthony Hopkins is having some second thoughts. This is what's kind of eating at him, as well as the fact that he's 65 as well as the fact he's on the verge of having a massive coronary explosion. And uh, all of a sudden, the voice goes, hey, I'm outside. Let me in. And he goes, hey. Is there someone at the front door? I didn't hear a ring, sir. He goes, I'm sorry. Do I sign your checks? <laughs> uh, can you do any Anthony Hopkins? Uh, mate, I think somebody at the door. No, that's, uh, mate, because he speaks a little fast and jetting. Uh, mate, 
I think somebody's at the door. You, Julian, can I be honest with you? No, it's terrible. You're kind of good at impressions. Okay. Like, you are able to lock in on a thing that they do. You kind of have that weird Hopkins voice down. Yeah. I'm not saying it's a good Hopkins. No, but it's... It's definitely in the right direction, though. <laughs> it's the first time I tried it, too. I know. Like, anytime I try to do an impression, I'm just like, man, I'm Anthony Hopkins. Unless you do it in, in front of me, and then I go, oh, I'm James Earl Jones. <laughs> exactly. I, I can kill it as long as you do it. Uh-huh. You do it first. I'm like, I can do that, too. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, let's both do it. <laughs> you hear how it isn't, but it's close enough that you can- I can copy your copy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so she goes, hey, you know what, Jack? There was somebody at the door. What it's do you real, want me to do with him? Real handsome. Smells bad. Send him, yeah, send him, into, send him into the library. And he just goes, I'm going to get out of here. And his family is like, huh? What? Because Drew's there- Claire's there, Marsha's there, Quince is there. Is Chauncey there? He's he couldn't make it. And and so he goes to the <laughs> <laughs> You were supposed to say it was Chauncey. Who's Chauncey? I made him up. And so he goes into the um library and he, who, who's there? Is this an elaborate practical is this an elaborate practical joke? Uh, do you really think that? Because I mean I've been speaking to you in your brain yeah. and I've just been confirmed real by your houseboy. And uh all of a sudden a uh, a white figure appears behind frosted glass. Tis I. I. Uh-huh. You did. Yes. Is Houseboy racist? I was I was picturing like you've got like a mm, no. House okay. N word is <laughs> racist. But house Houseboy, I mean that could be sexual too. Uh but so anyways, uh he reveals that he's Brad Pitt. It takes forever. He's talking behind that frosted glass for a while an uncomfortable comfortably long amount of time you should have just been sitting in a chair the answer is yes what i didn't ask any questions yeah no you did is this it am i gonna die the answer is yes you got it bingo and he goes well what what is this how do i know you're real and he goes i am and he's acting really strange i don't like it brad pitt yeah I mean, he's, he's doing that i'm not a human trying to be a human awkwardly thing knock knock Who's there? I love it. I That's, don't like it. It works so good for me. I'm so into this as a concept. I have a lot of fun with this. I love this type of movie. It's the kind of thing where he's like, he doesn't turn his head. He turns his whole body. Oh, uh, look, it's that the aliens trying really hard to blend in with humans. I don't get that. Oh. Over time, that's going to fade. Rapidly. Yeah. But not only that, I mean, this guy kills everybody. So he he's well-versed in humanity and... I mean, you what make is s- this peanut butter? I mean, motherfucker, it- you you looking at everybody all the time? You tell me you never killed a man eating peanut butter? I mean, he talks about how he's got tunnel vision and is focused on his task and isn't really soaking up how people really interact. He's he just wants doing to be, his job. But he wants to be a human. Yeah, oh, clearly he's longing for it. He's been watching. Yeah, for th- thousands of years, longing and and knows peanut butter. So he goes, hey, look, I'm going to kill you, but I won't do it as long as you can entertain me. You seem like a man who has access and excess. Dance, bitch. Dance for me. Mm-hmm. And he goes, <laughs> okay, but what do I just, what do I tell everybody? I don't know, but you can't tell them the truth. Otherwise, deal's off. All right, okay. Well, what do I call you? I don't know. <laughs> Make Pe- it up. Peanut butter? So they go back to the dining, and all of a sudden, everybody's like, who's this fella? It's my boyfriend. He looks disheveled and- He's- pretty looking pretty good right i'm doing pretty good for myself he looks he he has uh just woken up from a coma uh, after getting kicked in the head by a mule he's got one of those uh edgar roaches in him from men in black he is (laughs) yeah and they go well what is going on here and he goes oh this is a friend of mine he's gonna join us for dinner how nice to meet you and wouldn't it be nicer if my father would introduce you and anthony hopkins takes about 35 to 40 minutes trying to come up with any name a name Oh, yeah, excuse me. This is, uh, this is, um... Daddy, come on, a name. What's that now? Off the top of your head. Uh, what do you mean, what do we call him? Yeah, well, what do we, what do we call him, Dad? Uh, well, that's, or, uh, you know, we go way back. <laughs> this <laughs> guy and me, uh... Bill, the suspense is killing me. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's gone right out of my head. Um, I'm sorry, this is... Pen. Joe. His name's oh, Pen. Oh, yeah, I don't... Oh, Joe, that's... A strong name, Marsha Gay Harden says. Is there is there more to that name? Yeah, Drew's just like, what? Do, what, do, what do you mean? Please continue. Joe, Joe is his name. Ah, uh, he looks at the maid. Ah, uh, black. He goes, ah, uh, black. Joe, Joe Black. Meet him. Did he look at the maid? No, no. <laughs> There's no African American people in this movie. 
And he goes, oh, shit. Oh, that's a great name, Joe Black. Quince loves it. I love it. He's, he's a very positive guy. He's very likable. Except I think then all of a sudden, so he goes, sit down, Joe. And he goes, well, where are you staying? And, and he goes, oh, I'm here. <laughs> Drew's like, what is? What the fuck? Huh? You know, and, and then he's looking at the food and he passes him some bread and he's just. He doesn't know what to do. No, and, and nobody is like just nobody said, hey, are you all right, man? I mean, we're confused why you're here and all, but like. Are you are you a robot, an alien, death? Maybe. Um, did you just have a stroke? Yeah. I mean, I don't want to pry, but you, you just keep trying to hit me that that bread basket. But I have bread, mm-hmm. so it seems like you don't know how to be a person. Yeah. And then Claire shows up. Hey, Drew, kisses on him. This is great. I love Sits this down. scene. I was excited. Uh man, what are you doing here? He goes, what? She goes, he goes, Drew goes, everybody's going everywhere in this movie. You know each other? We've met. You know this guy? What the hell does this mean? And and she's ribbing on him, but she's like flirting with him. And uh, But he's not the same guy. Clearly. Unless he just got hit by two cars. <laughs> <laughs> his, half his brains are splattered. His up. brain is just a milkshake, you know? And so Anthony Hopkins is perturbed, of course, but he's also forlorn. Joe Black's just like, you know, a real lackadaisical, guffawing kind of an idiot. He's just he's just doing his thing. This is what he wanted. He wanted to soak it up. He wanted to blend it with the people and have to interact with them. And mm-hmm. he's been given that platform by being Anthony Hopkins' yeah. adopted son, business partner, lover. So Drew leaves. Claire's like, hey. And Joe's like, oh, hey. And she's like, what? Why are you here? You know, why are you different? And he goes, I'm weird. <laughs> and then he goes up to his room and he's walking around and he finds his way to the kitchen where he meets the butler staff the maids what are you what are you eating he goes a peanut butter sir it's up there with skiff and jippy yeah i don't want to number one flavor copyright infringement tm <laughs> and he goes give me that and puts it on a spoon and he sucks on it well this is very good it looks crunchy you skip the part where he anthony hopkins brought him to his room mm-hmm. and he's like i'm sleeping with you oh yeah Brad Pitt says that to him yeah wouldn't that be great i'm big you? spoon i would like to experience everything mm-hmm. that it is to be human you're my wife now <laughs> <laughs> he oh, just keeps get, for that. getting fucked by <laughs> joe black and so he uh i mean i was butter. i was thinking they would they would just sleep together but i mean it makes it's already an hour in and we have you're barely close. touched the movie yeah man and he, he really likes likes the peanut butter so he's walking around eating it and then he runs into Claire swimming. But how does there even any peanut butter left on that spoon? Because he's not like pecking at it. It's always in his mouth as though he's uh, licking it clean Sucking at that it. moment. Yeah. You know, off the bone, as it were. And she goes, what? what is going on, man? And he goes, I'm just eating peanut butter. What are you eating? Peanut butter. Have you had this before? She goes, yeah. I'm also wet and in my bikini swimming suit swimsuit because she's swimming laps it's not a bikini and uh but she's like super like into him even though he's like adult and clearly not the same man as the guy you met or and and she doesn't seem to think this she seems to think once he found out she was his uh, anthony hopkins's daughter that he shut down but i would have assumed she would have thought he was putting the moves on her because he knew she was his daughter and he's trying to get in And once he's in, he doesn't care anymore about her because it's all a charade. That's what I thought was what she was going to think. But that's not it at all. And she really wants him. So they kiss. Do they kiss? No, they're about to kiss. They don't kiss. I think they do. Do they kiss here? I think they do. Because Anthony Hopkins walks in on them once before they kiss. He goes, well, what the hell's going on over here? This is the middle of the night. I don't think Anthony Hopkins shows up. No. He's an old man. He's got to sleep. Needless to say, this movie's three hours long, so there's... A lot that's really not happening that's happening. So they're kind of eh, thinging it up, and he's sort of like, oh, boy, I'm interested in sex and in love slightly. I don't know that it's so much a sex. I feel like it's the romance is stirring. So, I mean, he's yeah. he's a human now. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he's still connected to Death World or whatever. I wish we would have seen more of that. Death World? No, human. He's watching uh, Miracle on 31st Street. Fourth? Some 30th I think Street. It's 34th. And he's like, what am I feeling? And he starts weeping. I don't know. I feel like he does a, a good job s- conveying these emotions in these moments where you're like, oh, it's creeping up on him. He's becoming human. 
I, I want to see a movie where he's hanging out with the butler and they're going around and he's just like trying cocaine laughing yeah they're doing like Russian roulette watches like a dog fight and kills everybody there because <laughs> it's upsetting yep Michael these, Vick's like over there like hey these dogs are nice dogs why did you do this to them mm-hmm. all their heads explode yeah and he's got two, people. Two, two dogs now oh what time is it oh hang on a second and he goes around the corner and he kills a guy <laughs> it's your time <laughs> it's supposed to be more elaborate but I don't I'm on a tight leash here so then the business stuff is happening too. And Anthony Hopkins is now rolling around with Joe Black in a black suit. And he's just everywhere. And Drew's losing his mind. It's nice to see you. Didn't expect you, but uh, certainly you can't get enough of a good thing. He's Why like, is he in this board meeting? Yeah, well, this is crazy. And he's like eating crackers and asking for tea. And I think Bill, more of these delicious cookies, the jelly ones, mm, and a cup of tea. In the middle of important dialogue. And I want cream with it. I think I'll try it English style. I love that. I think it's great. I love this. His incre- Drew's incredulity is fucking gold. Is there anything else, Mr. Black? How about some water? Mm, well, yes, thank you. Well, <laughs> can I be of service in any other way? Yeah. No, no, that's it. And so uh, Anthony Hopkins is like, I don't, I don't want to sell. I wanted to deliver the news. And I worked hard for this goddamn business and i don't want to give it to some asshole I, this is gonna end up being a soulless piece of shit like all the other soulless pieces of shit mm-hmm. and i actually spent my whole life having it mean something mm-hmm. uh, eventually i'll be the dad in thor so my standards <laughs> melt away in a couple of years but right now god damn it i'm not selling to this rupert murdoch looking motherfucker and and drew's concerned he goes hey hey what's bored what's happening here i thought we we're gonna make a crazy amount of money what's the problem here who the hell is that guy he says and they're like you're just jealous is he a robot he's a sex god is what he is yeah and so you know he goes hey um anthony hopkins why'd you do that he goes god damn it can't you just give me some time i need to poop oh it's when he kicks brad out yeah and so brad goes all right it's cool he gives him like 100 bucks yeah and he just goes directly to the hospital where susan works do you need a i'll get you a map because he i'll manage because he knows where she works i mean i guess it's the only other person he feels like he knows but he doesn't she doesn't tell him where he works i don't know maybe it's in there she told guy but not so he he must not have that guy's memories or anything i think he almost kind of does it almost seems like he's got a map of the entire universe in his brain to be honest. so then he should be a lot more natural and know about peanut butter yes all right you're talking sense i mean brad do you want to weigh in on this seven six three six three four seven six three six three four one eight nine seven yeah now i i guess brad was having some rough personal issues during this film and he just did not want to make it <laughs> jesus christ you say that about every movie he's like i don't want to be in this movie Can he's I going through a rough it? time personally in this what movie. is it i don't know maybe it was post julia lewis He's still feeling it. No, nah, that was a while ago. He's this. He's already been with Gwyneth Paltrow. That, well, that wasn't profound. And then doesn't Gwyneth Paltrow lead to Jennifer Aniston? So Drew's like, "What's going on?" Marsha Gay Harden's having a meltdown because she's trying to organize this party, and it's a massive party. Quince is just rolling with it. Hello, Quince. Hey. He likes Joe. He loves the old man, and he's with him when he doesn't want to sell pretty great guy honestly but drew really wants to sell and he's trying to work the board against him and quince even goes you know after the after anthony hopkins puts his foot down and says we're not selling he goes you know i'm gonna work on the old man i pitched him a couple ideas i got some merger ideas i was cooking up i didn't want to tell anybody you know and he goes oh yeah sure cool he goes but you know the old man he said whatever joe does says goes so and drew goes what did you just say Mm. what the fuck did you just say i'm gonna write that down whatever Joe says goes his sex friend. Interesting. I knew I should have sucked his dick, mm-hmm. but I still will though. Tell him that. And so now he's cooking up a thing. Cause he calls the board together and he uses Quince to basically railroad the old man, and he gets them to vote that Anthony Hopkins is incompetent or whatever. They're going to give him an earth-shattering golden parachute and let him resign after his sixty-fifth party, which is like two or three three days away he starts losing he starts losing susan she's going with joe and drew's just he can't understand what's happening in the world in general and joe is falling for claire but anthony hopkins is like he goes what are you doing why are you with my daughter she's she's a nice fun girl he's like i'm wheezing the juice 
I just watched Polly Shore's entire film catalog and I enjoyed it. Did you really? Do no, I'm that? saying that's what Joe would say. Because oh. we have to imagine he's experiencing life outside of the moments we see him. So what is he doing? He's going to Sunny Chiba triple kung fu flick showings at the local cinema. Is he in the background? Mm-hmm. As Joe? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Easter egg. Mm-hmm. And so then, because he play, he pays he pays Drexel a visit. This is like a pretty boring movie to recap. It is, and it's really nothing happens. <laughs> and I'm trying to just basically get to the point where Brad Pitt has sex with her. They fall in love, and they confess their love. Yeah. And they make love. Mm-hmm. Uh, a phrase I hate. You don't you don't make love. That's so stupid. Love happens. You have sex. I recommend fucking. You raw dog. You frick. Someday I am going to be doing that, and I will let you know when it happens for me. Tell me what it's like. I will. Someday I hope to do it, too. You know, Brad Pitt's like, look, Anthony Hopkins, you know, you're a cuck at this point. I kill you if you want. Or you can shut the fuck up and let me bang away on Darla over here. And she's just loving him. And he's loving her, but he can't tell her anything about himself. So the party basically erupts, and wow. You made it to the end. I mean, I'm just going to go there. Yeah, I mean, nothing not, Nothing really happens. It's on and I, off. Everything's on and off. I love this movie, but they're not, not, it's not a plot-driven movie. It's more of a vibe. So they're, the party, basically, he's going to resign after the party. Uh, he's also going to be dead after the party. And Joe Black admits that he is in love with his daughter, and she's agreed to come with him, even though she doesn't know what that means. Mm-hmm. And he, Anthony Hopkins is like, dude, you cannot kill her you motherfucker you said that if i went with you it would just be me Mm -hmm. you dirty rat you gave me your word that nobody else would have to come yep and you fucking lied man i want to fuck your daughter more oh i just really like getting in there even though once i'm out of this body and she's out of her body we probably won't be able to do that we'll just be free floating amorphous blobs he says like he's still killing everybody while he's there (laughs) like i think he could probably just live a life with her I would imagine, yes, absolutely. It'd be wrong and inappropriate because he's not supposed to exist, but he could. It's it, Considering how long he's been alive and how long he'll continue to be alive, this is but a blimp. Oh, yeah, blimp. It's flying overhead good year style. It's going to explode if you fuck it up. So Anthony Hopkins goes, no, bro, you, you, you can't do it dirty like that. Bottom line is, Joe, you're swindling her soul and you're doing it with your eyes wide open. I don't like what you're saying. I'm past caring what you like and what you don't like. And what I want is Susan. And I will have her, and she will have me, and that's the way it's going to be. Ain't goddamn dick like you can do to me, you know? You're already going to kill me, you fuck. Because, hey, you got some, you got some, go- some, some balls, some cones. Let me go look at your daughter from far away. Mm-hmm. Oh, man, the way she looks at me makes me feel. I really feel like she got the short end of the stick on this movie. <laughs> yeah. Right? She's Her character is supposed to be, I mean, her character is an idiot, an absolute idiot she's suckered in by his looks i mean she's suckered in by the idea of the man she met well she's not connecting that this new guy is completely not that mm -hmm. and she's able to exist in a relationship where she's in love with him and knows nothing about this strange creature but then you look at her previous relationship and she was willing to completely devote her the rest of her life to being drew's wife yeah and he's uh, not even good looking and a piece of shit he pecks her when he sees her sometimes he walks away yeah so She's already spineless. We know that. I mean, she's got, like, talent and prospects. Yeah, she seems great. And she's pretty good looking. And she comes from a wealthy family. I mean, you're a doctor and such, you know? So to just completely, like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like it. So he's basically like, hey, I don't think you, you can come with me. And then she looks at him. She goes, wait a second. Hold on a minute. You're not that guy that I didn't get the name of. Who are you? You had sex with me. <laughs> I was under the impression you were this man, and, and in fact, you're, I don't know. Some people might call, call that rape. <laughs> I would call that rape. Yeah. And he goes, y- you know who I am. She goes, you're Joe. <sighs> yes, you're Joe. He goes, you're goddamn right. Uh, I got to leave, though. And your father's ca- going to come with me. But she does know he's deaf. I assume that's what they're intimating, but... Yeah, she just can't bring herself to say it. Because, like, the Jamaican lady... Oh, we skipped over that. She looks him in the <laughs> eyes, and she goes, Oh, don't put me next to this man. I'm going to die. Mama, stop it. It's just a man. What's a Bad spirit. She just thought fever. She don't mean nothing. <laughs> him be death. 
And the, her daughter goes, Grandma, shut the fuck up. So she is next to him and she goes, are you here for me, man? I'm going to stop doing it. She goes, are you here for me? Right from the next place. You waiting here to take us? Like you're the bus driver to the year? No, man, I on holiday. And he goes, and I'm going to do him though, because he goes, hey, it, it all be airy, man. You don't have to fear me, man. I'm thinking, what is going on here? It's pretty amazing. Why? Who decided that he needed to do this accent? <laughs> well, clearly she understands English. <laughs> I mean, her daughter is speaking it. She's speaking English, just slightly Jamaican, right? Yeah. He had to probably, like, get coached on that. Yeah. And they put money into that. And he continues to do it. Yeah. Every, he just falls into it, he man. He com- comes back to visit her and does this some more. It's almost Irish. I think he does a good job with it, but it's quite befuddling. It is. I, I love it. It's, uh, I, it's it's wildly inappropriate, but I love it. It's entirely unnecessary. It should have been like, I don't know, she's French or something. Yeah, maybe inappropriate is the wrong word. Unnecessary is correct. Mm-hmm. You're, you're right. It is inappropriate. <sighs> I don't know. He's not like... In hindsight, him doing it. It makes sense that if that is how she speaks and is used to people her age that she knows speaking like that, that, yeah, I guess to put her at ease, he'll meet her on her level. But so she goes, I got this constant pain and I need you to to take it away. He goes, I can't can't do that. Then just kill me, man. Take me then. And he goes... Can't do it. Um, I can fuck you, but I can't. I'm going to tell you what. Close your eyes. Bring it, I thought he was going to kill her. And he lays hands on her. He I does, did too. He he's does looking later, around doesn't like, he? Mm, he does. Because <laughs> he's looking around like, mm, I guess I could, you know, just this once. But he he shows her the beyond. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really ushers in, into a vision of the beyond. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. she goes, oh, man. He goes, soon, girl. You have that to look forward to. Me, Dr. Proteus. Uh, so then he does go back to visit her when he confesses that he loves this woman. And she goes, but, you know, you're... This is not your place, man. She yo. doesn't know you, Jack. Yeah, like, we're talking about is it appropriate, but I... You keep doing it. You have to do it, almost. I, I didn't touch him for a minute, and then yeah. I had to jump in. And, and he, she goes, that's not love. Is this love that you're feeling? No. It's not the one you're searching for. No. And he goes, ah, fuck you. You know what? You're dead. <laughs> Talk that shit. God. That's no way. No, but he does kill her because she asks for it. And he says, well, it is your time. Huh. Maybe. I don't know. Now they're at the party and... Anthony Hopkins has created this whole situation to get his company back. Right, because uh, Drew confessed to Quince after they booted Anthony Hopkins in the vote that he, in fact, worked for Montecourt or whatever. He was a plant. Bettencourt? Betten. Yeah, maybe. It's a weird dumb name. And Anthony Hopkins even says as much. So Quince is like, what? You used me to do your bidding? He goes, get with it, mother. Get rich or die trying. Yeah, I'm going to make you so fucking wealthy. Money by Monday. You're going to have that life water money, Jack. Damn. He goes, I like that. All of a sudden, he's he's upside down doing sit-ups. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. Go, go. So he, so Anthony Hopkins goes, hey, Quince, I, want you to, I need you to get Drew here because I want to tell him in person. And he goes, I don't know about that, Chief. He goes, Make it so. He goes, you got it. Make it so. Because mm-hmm. Quince did confess that he inadvertently was used as a stooge. So he gets Drew there and Joe Black, he goes, I think it's about time because Anthony Hopkins has the board secretly on speakerphone because one of the other board guys is with him, him and Quince. So he, he goes, I'm going to reveal myself to you now. And you know why? Because everything is not Irie. Yeah. You know, no woman. I'm crying. Yeah. It's because he had to break up with Claire Ferlani. Mm-hmm. And he goes, okay, who are you? I have the power to kill everybody on this planet right now. And this is, again, what calls into question this Joe Blackfeller's understanding of life and manhood. Because he starts dropping all sorts of science on the guy. I'm with the fucking IRS. I'm an agent. Hmm, yes, we were convinced that Montague on past deals has structured his mergers and acquisitions in suspicious and complicated ways mm-hmm. so as to evade paying the taxes he is liable for. The agency asked Bill for his cooperation in an undercover investigation of Bontecue. Now, you need to resign, and I won't put you in jail. And then he goes, well, the board's going to have to. We're all here. We unanimously vote that we have our new leader again as Anthony Hopkins. And he goes, oh, shit. You really pantsed me on this one. At least I still got Claire for Alani. Mm-hmm. Oh. Well, I guess you could if you really put in the effort. Because she's downtrodden. Nah, she's, man, you can't. 
She's not tasted gonna, the pit. She yeah, can't. she's not going back to his little his, his, uh, weak, weak chin bitch ass. Mm-hmm. Sorry, Jake Weber. It's probably me and if I ran into in real life, I'll probably be like, hey, man, mm-hmm. cool. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great job in all your movies. <laughs> <laughs> I especially liked you in the heist movie. And you're mostly in TV shows. Yeah. You should, that's where you belong. So now Anthony Hopkins is back on top, but he's dead. He's dying. He's yep. going to be killed. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he goes to give a speech. It's pretty fucking um, glib. His, him, him and his uh, Marsha Gay Harden had quite the talk. They did. She, mm-hmm. she confesses that she doesn't mind being second fiddle. I felt loved. And that's all that matters. So, never mind favorites. You're allowed to have one. The point is, you've been mine. I'm not allowed us but he's never like, I have always loved you so much. Mm-hmm. I love like, you from now going forward. You know what? You're you're pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I'm stroking your hair. You're pretty cool. Yeah. Where's that Quince at? He's all right. And so they have a moment, you know, um, him and Quince don't, but he's cool with Quince. And he has a moment with his daughter. Where he's, you keep making it sound like Claire Forlani is his only daughter. I know. Because technically she feels like it. <laughs> Uh, he has a, a kind of uh, a little powwow with Claire. My God, the things he says to her are not even close to what he says to poor Marsha Gay Harden. Oh God, no! He's like, uh, "Yeah, hey, Marsha Gay Harden, I, I think you're cool. Yeah, you're all right. Thank you. I, you're a good kid. Thank you for being a friend, Claire Forlani. Yeah, you've given a meaning to my life that I had no right to expect. Yeah, every breath I take is because of your beauty and the joy that I get from just knowing you exist in this world. Mm-hmm. You are. My moon and my stars. Not my only that, Not only that, but the future of humanity yeah. rests on your happiness. Mm-hmm. So get it together, girl. She's like, oh, shit, are you dying? <laughs> basically, without saying it. And he goes, yeah, basically without saying it. Uh-huh. So then uh, the guy comes up to Joe Black, a waiter, and he goes, hey, man, what are you doing up here? And he goes, I'm just chilling, bro. And he goes, I can't get you anything. Do you have any peanut butter? I don't. Did you want to say it? Here, you say it. I feel like you wanted to say it. No, no, I think that's me. great. Because he goes, what? What's peanut peanut butter? What is that? I don't know what the, what that is. Do you do you want it on? That's toast? Not something that humans know. Do you oh. want it on toast or crackers? No, just yep. the butter. Mm-hmm. That was good. Give me that creamy shit. <laughs> <laughs> Pour it on me. <laughs> and and so all of a sudden Anthony Hopkins comes up and he goes, oh shit, because it's the end of the road. Wouldn't he have been so hilarious if he like flipped the fuck out when he ate chunky peanut butter? What the fuck? I think what that, is in here? I think what he gave him was chunky. He likes it. You could see it was mm-hmm. brimming with, you know, shards of peanut. And so he goes, well, we're going to get out of here, right? And he goes, yeah, um, I'm going to leave your daughter a gift or whatever, though. She'll be all right. Well, they have a nice talk. He's like, ah, I just wanted to thank you, Joe. Mm-hmm. Blah, he, blah, 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 blah. He says something to Joe that Joe said to him. He goes, ah, you turned it around on me. And then oh, Joe, yeah. Yeah. I really like that. What is that. That's my Brad Pitt. Oh, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. And then Joe's like, I would like to tell you about my appreciation of you. It's a nice moment. I like it. It is. And Claire Forlani's looking at the two of them standing on that mound a mile away from her. Yeah. And then they start walking up it and she starts chugging after them. Well, and like all of the fireworks ever created is going off over that lake. That's nice. It's just, I mean, that alone has got to be incredibly expensive. Don't fuck this take. <laughs> That's probably why he fired Eli, Eli Roth. The guy's hobbling while the fireworks are going off. And so she runs up to the bluff, or the glen, rather, uh, of the, the knoll to find them. It's a bridge. Just, just as they're going down that little hill. And then all of a sudden, Brad Pitt comes walking back. As soon as they're out of view, boop, he's coming back the other direction. Because he's he's actually whatever his name is now. Frankie, Frankie Frank. Frankie Two Fingers. Oh, <laughs> I think he had all of his fingers. But he only uses two of them. That's true. And uh, she goes, oh, uh, you're him again, huh? Yeah. He goes, yeah. It's all a little foggy. I will never remember it. Is that okay? Like, what do you remember? And how alive are you? He's completely alive. But I mean, like, again, like, how? You're so practical. It's been... It's magical. Several death, days. Death came back, but death has been using his healed body. Right, but I mean, he, is, he isn't at all alarmed that he's wearing a tuxedo at a very fancy party. Right, and that girl's there in a different outfit. When the last thing he remembered was, if nothing else, her walking away from him. And that was daytime. 
Yeah. Now it is nighttime. Yeah. But he's got a vague feeling some time has passed. And he just immediately, they're hitting on each other again. I would like to talk about what I found to be the craziest thing. Her dad's dead body is laying on the other side of the hill. And she doesn't like, oh, excuse me, I got to go get my dead dad's body. Let's yeah. just flirt. Just face down in the credenzas. What? <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. You know he's over there. Mm-hmm. Brad Pitt didn't just whisk him away into the nether and his body will never be seen again. No, I was thinking that same thing because I was like, oh man, what, they must have just walked off into the... Wait, no. He removed his life and his corpse is doing something over there. Maybe it looks like it's screaming, you know? Mm-hmm. Maybe it fell on a, like a spike. Man, it's a good thing that this all worked out the way it did or she might think that Brad Pitt just killed him. Well, honestly, if we're being honest... He probably triggers and watches as he has a massive heart attack. He doesn't just remove you. Like that woman in the hospital, she probably just dies. She succumbs to whatever illness she had. You know, he, he doesn't just zip. You, you actually die. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess the way that I envisioned it and what I had hoped would happen pretty much the whole movie was Brad Pitt and him would be up there on the mound talking, and he'd be like, is it going to hurt? And he's like, I mean, you're already dead, mm-hmm. and he looks and sees his body on the ground. Oh, sure. That would have been really cool, actually. Right. Or, like, Claire Forlani would also see them far away and chase after him, but then find out he's been dead for 20 minutes back where she already was. I mean, the problem is, is for it to work, she can't see him. I mean, a perfectly fine ending, like you said, is where he's like, you're already dead or whatever. Mm-hmm. But if it would have been they were seating, seated, got up, and were walking and talking... We see them like rise into the frame and walk and talk, have their moment. And then he goes, is it going to hurt? And he goes, yeah, right, he's dead, bro. And they look back and he's slouched on the bench. God, what if there was like a beam of light and you just see Photoshop Anthony Hopkins? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it has to end. These two disparate films have to end with an ending. So they have their moment, but it can't interfere with his moment and her because death has to be gone. It has to be Brad Pitt, but the corpse is there and she can't find it because she's hitting on this guy. Why can't I think they should have just cut to them bumping into each other at the diner again, like a year later. I think it should have just been like, yeah, maybe she finds him and they have a moment. She has a moment. And then Brad Pitt stumbles up like, what is going on? Yeah. Or like even like Brad Pitt, when he came back before, you didn't see the dead old man on the ground. Mm-hmm. He should have had him maybe like meet him at the hospital. Anthony Hopkins starts having a heart attack. They take him to the hospital, at which point he dies and Brad Pitt leaves, death leaves Brad Pitt where he was in the hospital. So then she goes, oh, what are you, what are you doing? Oh, I got hit by a car too. Oh, that's sexy. You know, so, I don't know. It's establish that he is supplanted back where he should be. So it isn't weird. I don't know if I need to go that far, but... The movie's over. You love this movie? I did not. <laughs> I enjoyed aspects of it, but just when I was really getting into it, it, it takes a, a, you know, goes back to the other thing, and th- that's fine too, but it's like, I just can't... I couldn't believe it when I got halfway through this, and I said, I can't believe there's a whole nother movie left of this movie. Mm-hmm. This is so much movie. It's two Monument Avenues. And I was not, I honestly was not bored. I did have to go to bed. I couldn't do all three hours in one night. Oh, okay. And I was so happy yeah, to told me that, yeah. pick it back up and watch it the next day, and I almost started crying at the end. Oh, I did not. I watched it in its entirety. Uh, unfortunately, my internet was just not having a good day. And so I would go to rewind it, and it would just spin. And then it would hit it, and I'm like, fuck, it didn't go far, but back enough so i'd have to do it again and at one moment where anthony hopkins is in anthony is in the bathroom at the very beginning i don't think it's what really happens there's a weird flash at two different points where it almost seems like they're inserting a frame almost like him being inserted in a fight club i'm like there's absolutely no way this movie is smart enough to do anything like that so it has to just be some sort of a stutter or, you know resolution pop or something and so the enjoyment of the movie also probably for me for me was hampered just because i had to like endure the fucking because i often had to go back because i was like oh wait did that just, i do that a lot wait did that just happen did that cup was that really facing the other way i gotta go back you know? <laughs> <You're lunatic>. uh, <laughs> um but nah, i don't know man it's a fine film very long i like stuff in it but it's not for me 
I was not bored. I do not feel like it's super obvious what you could cut from it, but it does seem insane that it's three hours. Mm -hmm. That seems really unnecessary. Yeah, I think you could maybe get rid of some of that secret board meeting stuff. You could just get rid of Brad Pitt. You honestly could. (laughs) Shut up. (laughs) I mean, you could, and again, we're talking about restructuring the entire movie, but I would actually not have the opening Brad Pitt scene at all. Oh, I love it. That's what really connects you to that guy. No, I I really like that, but it's unnecessary because... He's somebody else for the entirety of the movie. Exactly. So what we need is she meets him there, and she's intrigued by his opaque obfuscation. What is... What is this? You see the way this guy's sucking on that peanut butter spoon? And now she's hearing the words of her father, like, take a risk, you know? Because she's like, yeah, what is this guy doing? This guy's so funky. I like it, you know? It's like an Adam Sandler character or something. And uh, then that develops because then she's not, there isn't this lie that she's in love with him because she thinks he's a different man and then has to discover that he's some entity inside of the guy that she wanted him to be and he violated her and all of this shit you know that i would have gotten rid of right off the gate don't even need it don't even need it they don't even all we need to know is that this guy was dying and this is the body he took i don't understand it has to be there for the very dumb ending to work but then you don't need the dumb ending yeah i always uh it worked on me when Pitt came back, but then I was like, well, this is actually pretty stupid, but I am excited for them to be together again. Mm-hmm. This is a, a nice uh, gift for her to get that guy that mm-hmm. she actually liked back. Yeah, I just, I just don't think that's necessary. So then you just have this brief love affair that it's easier for him to walk away from. I mean, not easier, but it, it's easier for me to watch him walk away from it. So you're, are you kind of, uh, you're down on the film a little bit, but you're thinking like probably like an eight or a nine? Oh, God, yeah clearly what's what's your number no for the movie i'm gonna give it a six you know it's better than average yeah i'd give this movie a six i'm gonna guess that you're gonna give it a 7.5 can i be honest you gave it an eight yeah i'm pretty ashamed about giving it an eight do what you do man i really felt it i i was really swept up in it i liked anthony hopkins the mortality of it all Mm. hit me good i like seeing death take a holiday in a human body i enjoyed I got to enjoy him enjoying life Mm -hmm. and I thought it was comical and honestly the romance stuff is probably the weakest even though I was excited for them both to be happy Mm -hmm. but it was a little bit gross and awkward well and here's another thing though Uh, so Anthony Hopkins is in charge now again yeah and then you know a mere hour or two later he's gonna be dead yeah so then who's in charge me he should have been like, don't vote for me, vote for Quince. The board, maybe? Yeah. Is well, the charge? board, of course, but then they're going to be like, oh, well, we really could use that money. Let's get Drew back. Sell this fucker. We don't know how to run this shit. We're just a board. We're Claire, bored. Claire Forlani. Mm-hmm. Nope. Brad Pitt. I, yeah. They'll track down Joe. I venture to guess it'd be Quince, and then it'll just run into the ground. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> he, might be, years. he might be really good at it. We don't actually know. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but that being said, even though I didn't like aspects of... I loved the opening scene with Brad Pitt. I didn't like when he returns for quite some time until he forms some sort of a semblance of a relationship more with these people. Uh huh. Um, basically, the peanut butter scene is okay in the kitchen. What about when Quince is like, do you like me, Joe? And he's like, you're one of my favorites. Quince. I love that. I love when Quince almost cries and then calls off the guards. All right, no, no, no. That was a good one. I liked everything with Drew, actually, even though I'm not a big fan of Jake Weber. I think his reactions to Brad Pitt and Brad Pitt's reactions to him are pretty good. I think you're actually bringing me up a notch on his performance. Jake? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think one of the things that I don't like is that he's clearly doing an American accent. Jake? Yeah. Is he not American? He isn't. Oh, interesting. Uh, you, You know, I think the big problem is... Him being with Claire Forlani just makes me want to throw a chair through the wall. That too. Yeah. And he doesn't even like realize how lucky he is. Right. You know? You're a fucking piece of shit. She's a nice lady. Mm-hmm. It would have been cliche, but I, I kind of wish that Anthony Hopkins would have, um, I don't know, done something more than just spent the remaining days trying to salvage his company. 
I thought it was actually quite shameful that he just like kept having dinner with them instead of instead of having like heart to hearts. Exactly, doing like, something. I feel like I would have spent all my time with people one on one. Yeah, that's what I was hoping for. Was that yeah. that we would get this sort of that's what would um, ultimately sway you know Brad Pitt. Yeah, why the fuck would you care about your company? That you're gonna be dead soon if i got oh, one day left you know what i'm gonna do huh. edit this podcast because that's uh, yeah because <laughs> that's what i mean though like if you're gonna salvage your company then you should also be finding a successor yeah. that will follow you know in your footsteps and, and 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 abide by your wishes or whatever instead he just gets drew out of there but then leaves because he's dead god okay what do you get pity um we're at 93 minutes by the way mm-hmm. uh i'm gonna give pit a seven i think Okay. There's some Jesus. There's some eight point five moments in there. There's also a couple of five point five moments in there for me. So I'm gonna go right with that seven point five. I said seven, now I'm going seven point five. Okay, I'm gonna I'm jumping right to eight. Okay. I liked him as the nice guy and I liked him as death. I was amused by his choices to portray death. I was like, Oh look at Pitt. He's mm-hmm. doing it. Mm-hmm. And I like it and mm-hmm. I believe it. Mm-hmm. I'm into it. I, I kind of feel like he came out a little strong in the coffee shop scene, but he's, oh, I, he's charismatic, so it works. Yeah, I love that. That was like Pitt going to work. That yeah. was like, yeah, I'm a handsome guy, and this girl's cute, and I think I'm just going to talk to her. I'm a one-woman kind of man. Oh, he's great. He, I like when he goes to fill the coffee. He holds his tie first so it doesn't dunk into his food, Yeah. but then he looks at the guy first. He raises it. To I took this from behind the counter, yeah. You know, that's a really good move because he's not a fucking regular there. You just got there. Mm-hmm. Got to get that apartment. Everybody's yeah. a doctor around there. Yep. I like this movie. Very nice. Okay. Those are our scores. Uh, now, the length of this episode, we're only halfway through the running time for this film. <laughs> right. So now what you can do is go ahead and restart this episode right now. No, no. It's Play a- it from here to the beginning in reverse. Oh. Get those secret mis- messages in there. Send us your socks and quarters please just call us once <laughs> just say anything like john kuzak anything seven six three six three four eight nine seven let us know you exist uh go ahead and hit us up on facebook reddit youtube instagram we doing filmographies we doing filmographies at gmail.com if mm-hmm. you want to send us an email seven six three six three four one eight nine seven if you want to call us or send us a text message rate review subscribe Pick a movie and There's we'll that. review it if you review us on Apple Podcasts. Also, uh, what we do on this podcast is we what? pick it at... <laughs> now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, we're on no- Now Playing Network as well. Yes, that's true. You can go over to nowplaynetwork.net. Find lots of other great podcasts. Mm-hmm. Tell them that Brad Pitt sent you and they'll be like, what? Really? Is Brad, sir, he doesn't. You know Brad? Yeah. Can, will he be a guest on our show? No. We'll see you tomorrow with B. The John, John Malkovich. Malkovich. That's right. John Cusack, Catherine Keener, Cameron Diaz, John Malkovich, and Brad Pitt. Mm -hmm. And Sean Penn. (laughs) They all have equally large roles in this movie. Yeah. See you tomorrow. Yep. He's been Jason. I've been Jules.